During the early years of the Apollo program, NASA scientists and engineers recognized the necessity for a vehicle to assist astronauts in lunar exploration. The limitations posed by bulky spacesuits, limited life support, and other factors led to the expectation that human mobility on the lunar surface would be reduced. In 1964, NASA initiated research on lunar surface vehicles with the conceptual design of the Mobile Laboratory. Over the following years, a range of vehicles were studied, culminating in the development of the Lunar Rover Vehicle, or LRV, which directly benefited from the knowledge gained. Creating the LRV presented numerous technical challenges that hadn't been encountered in terrestrial vehicle design and operation. These challenges included the lack of atmosphere, extreme temperature fluctuations ranging from plus to minus 250 Fahrenheit, weak lunar gravity, one-sixth of the Earth's, and the uncertainty surrounding lunar soil and topography. The unique lunar environment necessitated the development of innovative solutions. The need for a lunar vehicle was confirmed by the success of the Apollo 11 missions and subsequent lunar landings. These missions emphasized the importance of a vehicle that would enable astronauts to cover more ground efficiently, conserve energy and life support resources, transport additional equipment, and collect more lunar soil samples. In May 1969, NASA decided to proceed with the design and development of the Lunar Roving Vehicle. Harrison Schmidt of Apollo 17 said, Without it, the major scientific discoveries of Apollo 15, 16, and 17 would not have been possible, and our current understanding of lunar evolution would not have been possible. Moving on to the 21st century, as science and technology are developing more and more widely, the pursuit of space exploration and conquest is no longer confined solely to government entities. Private companies have even emerged as the key players in this domain. Among them, SpaceX, led by visionary entrepreneur Elon Musk, stands at the forefront. So besides building Starship, the largest rocket ever built to colonize the Moon and Mars, SpaceX recently revealed a new rover lander, possibly by as early as 2026. The vehicle, known as the Flexible Logistics and Exploration Rover, or FLEX, is made by a startup called Astrolab, which is in Hawthorne, California, close to SpaceX's headquarters. According to Astrolab, Flex will be transported to the moon by Starship, the giant spacecraft currently being developed by SpaceX. Videos of Flex show a vehicle broadly the size of a conventional Jeep off-roader that will, Astrolab claims, become the largest and most capable rover to ever travel to the moon. Its modular system to transport and deploy payloads is aimed at encouraging regular use, which could accelerate the vision of a permanent presence on the moon. Traditionally, rover vehicles have had to be created on a bespoke basis for specific missions due to the irregular nature of space travel. Flex has a maximum mass, including cargo, of over two tons, which Astrolab says provides greater opportunity to conduct scientific experiments and commercial operations on the moon than has been afforded by previous rover vehicles. The company says it's already signed several deals with customers to carry payloads on its debut mission. Flex boasts an array of features that'll make it well-suited for lunar exploration. It's equipped with a suite of sensors for semi-autonomous operation that'll allow it to independently align with and collect payloads, as well as avoid potentially dangerous obstacles. Articulating limbs keep the chassis level on rugged terrain, allowing it to absorb impacts and alter its ground clearance depending on conditions underfoot. The nominal speed of Flex is 15 kilometers per hour, but we hope to push this a bit and set a new lunar speed record at just over the 18 kilometers per hour that Eugene Cernan did in 1972, the company said. And while it can accommodate two standing crew if necessary, the interface they use is removable, freeing up space and meaning that large payloads can be accommodated and robotically transported via teleoperation from Earth, lunar orbit, or an outpost. In addition, a six degree of freedom robotic arm allows Flex to assist with any setup that may be required for scientific experiments or activities. Our Astrolab team has created much more than a rover for use on the moon or Mars, said Jarrett Matthews, Astrolab's founder and CEO. We've created a logistics system that can accommodate a wide variety of cargo. We expect that this approach will help establish a permanent lunar outpost on the moon at a lower cost and in less time than previously envisioned. Note that Matthews has a long history of working with rovers. He started his career at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where he worked on the Twin Spirit and Opportunity rovers that were launched to Mars in 2003. He then left to go to SpaceX, working on the company's Crew Dragon spacecraft and the technology needed for it to dock with the ISS. He's now taking his expertise to his new company, Astrolab, which he formed with his co-founders in January 2020. 
Tom Ocinero, senior vice president of commercial business at SpaceX, added, Starship is designed to transport large amounts of cargo, including rovers, to the Moon and Mars for research and exploration. Developing sustainable outposts will require lunar logistics and transportation on the surface of the Moon, like what Astrolab offers. We look forward to working with the Astrolab team. Flex's ability to carry two astronauts means it's also compatible with NASA's requirements for lunar terrain vehicle designs, raising the prospect of future orders from the agency. More importantly, Flex is more than just a concept. Because last year, the Astrolab team started testing a full-scale, fully functional terrestrial prototype of the Flex rover in the California desert near Death Valley, about five hours from their company's headquarters located in Hawthorne. Former astronaut Chris Hadfield, who's on Astrolab's board of advisors, even took the rover for a spin, giving his advice on how the vehicle's design held up. Hadfield said in the video, the rover is a joy to drive. Hadfield, who's also an Astrolab advisory board member, was unsurprisingly upbeat about the vehicle. It was not only a joy to drive flex, but also see its size, capability, and get an intuitive sense of what this rover can do. Matthew says they learned a lot from their field test with the Flex prototype. Ultimately, the prototype's built for Earth terrain, so the equipment's much beefier than it'd be for a lunar environment, which has one-sixth of our planet's gravity. The company says the final rover should weigh about 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms, and it'll be built specifically to handle the lunar terrain. We want the hardware to be robust so they can essentially drive it like they stole it and not have to worry about it, Matthew says. Lunar rovers have to contend with all sorts of environmental struggles, such as higher radiation and the dreaded lunar light, a two-week period when the moon's plunged to darkness and temperatures can drop below 208 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 130 Celsius. Astrolab claims Flex will have the insulation and sufficient internal battery capacity, allowing the rover to withstand and stay warm between 100 and 300 hours of nighttime at the moon's south pole. Once the sun rises again, Flex's external solar arrays will then start generating electricity from the light. The company used Flex to pick up and deliver payloads, as well as set a vertical solar panel, a critical technology needed for in-space energy that future lunar astronauts will probably need to stay on the moon long term. With actual wheels rolling over the California desert sands, Astrolab appears quite some way along in terms of lunar rover development. It's teamed up with the electric vehicle specialist Venturi for batteries and materials able to withstand the harsh lunar element and appears to be following the rapid, iterative development approach of companies such as SpaceX. Astrolab says Flex will be the largest lunar rover to travel on the lunar surface after it lands on the Earth's satellite. Matthew said the startup company has already got customers waiting to use the rover to transport cargo during the 2026 Starship mission. On top of that, Matthews believes that Flex could help establish a permanent human presence on the moon and beyond. Ultimately, our goal is to have a fleet of rovers both on the moon and Mars, he said, and I really think I see these vehicles as the catalyst ultimately for the off-Earth economy. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.